Hey guys, I'm Nathan from Arms and Armor. Today I want to talk about the saga of the broken sword a little more. We've gotten a bunch of excellent questions since I posted the video a couple weeks ago about my sword breaking uh, due to edge-on-edge uh, -edge contact. Now, a couple of these questions are fun ones that I think that we can address today. So one question that someone had was how difficult it would be to put a new blade on this hilt. And the answer on this hilt is pretty easy, but it depends a lot, right? And it all comes down to the type of peen on your sword. So on this sword, you can see that we have what's called a peening block or a peening nut, right? So the tang comes through the pommel, through this nut, and is then peened on the end there. Now, peening nuts like this happen historically uh, through hundreds and hundreds of years. And I think one of the reasons they did them is for precisely this reason, right? You can grind off that peen with a file and then reuse the pommel, the grip, and the cross without destroying the pommel, right? So. I'd say, you know, about half of medieval swords I've seen have some kind of a peening block on them, and they get more common, uh, in my experience, as you move into the Renaissance. Now, someone may more know more about that kind of chronology than I do, but one thing I can tell you is that it makes it way easier to take a sword apart than if the peen is inside of the pommel. If it's inside of the pommel and you want to remove this blade, you have to drill out that peen or destroy the grip uh, to take it apart. With this one right now, I can just take this blade out, make a new blade and remount it, and that'll work pretty well. So that's one question. Another great question was if you could continue fighting with a broken sword if it broke in combat. And I think, sure, you could, but it's gonna be way less effective. So one of the things that many of you pointed out is that this sword broke right, right about at the point of optimal percussion, right? That secondary uh, vibration node on the sword, uh, which is unsurprising because that's where I was uh, hitting things with it, right? At the point where the cut is most powerful. So without this foot of the blade, the physics of what's left are much different. Now you still could cut, right? You could do some cutting. It's not gonna be as efficient because you don't have that extra mass out here letting you slice through. Uh, you know, you could half sword if you're in a, you're an armor, you could half sword this, but this point that's left isn't, I mean, that point will go into someone, right? It's sharp, but it's not going to uh, easily pierce armor or anything like that. I guess if you crammed this into somebody, uh, it would hurt, but I think it's unlikely to go through them, right? You can see how that, uh, that end is. It's, you know, that's as wide as a fetter blade uh, at the end, although it's significantly more stiff. So could you continue fighting with it? Sure, you could defend yourself, right? If someone's cutting at you, you can still parry. You've got the strong of your blade left here, uh, but it's not gonna be that offensive or that effective offensively. Um, I'd be tempted to switch to my dagger, flip it upside down, I go for the Mord How uh, with this puppy. <laughs> if you find the end of the sword, you could stab someone with it, though you're gonna be want to be careful of the edges there. It is kind of a dagger in and of itself. Uh, another question someone had is if you could reuse or uh, these blades to make smaller blades, and absolutely. With this, the end of the sword, if you wanted to, 
you could grind a tang into it and then mount it as a dagger. You could totally do that. In fact, my dagger that I use for boar hunting is the end of a sword uh, that we had in the shop that I repurposed uh, to make into a dagger. And this, sure. Yeah, it's a good blade. You could totally reprofile this, put it in a different hilt, make it some kind of a shorter swordy dagger uh, type deal, uh, and it would absolutely work. The final question that is asked is if you could reforge this sword back together like in Lord of the Rings, and sadly, no, not really. Uh, it just wouldn't work very well. If you wanted to reuse this steel, which they definitely would have wanted to do in period, right? Steel's expensive, and if this is good steel, which it is, you want to reuse it. Instead of trying to forge weld this back into a blade, I think what you'd be more likely to do is cut the blade into shorter sections, and then you'd pile them up and forge them into a new billet that then you could draw out. Otherwise, you're gonna have, uh, I, I don't think it would work very well to just try and weld this back together and reheat treat it. Uh, you'd wanna render it down all the way into a billet and then reforge it out, and then you could reuse it again. I was trying to cut with this broken piece and it's funny, when you don't have that last foot of the blade, the physics of this are just so much different. You really don't have nearly as much cutting ability or power because essentially you're hitting at the very point of this thing. And if you hit, you know, down further on the blade, it uh, is just so close to your hands. It's like kind of cutting with a really short, cutting with a kitchen knife or something like that. So, some of your questions about broken swords answered. Uh, take a look at some of our other videos, and I'll see you next time.